Hi friends, good morning and welcome back to my sofa. I am here with you this morning and I am going to share a story with you in just a minute, but I wanted to tell you something. I am really, really chilly and so I am all wrapped in a blanket. I hope later on when your parents show you this video that you get to be on your couch all wrapped up in a cozy blanket while you spend time with me. Well, without further ado, I want to share a very special story with you today. The scripture reading that Pastor Groom chose for today's sermon in church is from the Gospel of Matthew. It is a parable called the parable of the wicked tenants. This story is full of many lessons for the people of God. However, this parable is one of those hard and difficult stories. It's hard because in this story, one of the things Jesus talks about is bullies and the selfish and terrible things they can do when things do not go their way. It is really hard to like bullies, isn't it? But even though a story is hard and difficult in the Bible, we know, as I always say, there is God news or good news in all the stories of the Bible. And I think the God news in this story is at the end. Well, Jesus, after telling folks all about the bully's actions, how they reject and hurt people sent to them by God to help them, he comments on the story using the imagery of, guess what? Rocks, rocks, well, I love rocks, and some of you know this if you join me for story time this summer. Those of you who weren't able to join me, well, now you know too. I love rocks, all kinds of rocks, and most especially, I am really drawn to heart-shaped rocks. Well, in the story, Jesus says something really important. He says this. I'm going to share my screen to show you. He says, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Oh, friends, what do you think this means? Well, I have a really fun book that might help us understand better. Let me share my screen and bring up this very special story. You'll see why. Everybody Needs a Rock by Bird Baylor with pictures by Peter Parnell. Everybody Needs a Rock. I am sorry for kids who don't have a rock for a friend. I'm sorry for kids who only have tricycles, bicycles, horses, elephants, goldfish, three-room playhouses, fire engines, wind-up dragons, and things like that. If they don't have a rock for a friend, that's why I'm giving them my own 10 rules for finding a rock. Not just any rock, I mean a special rock that you find all by yourself and keep it as long as you can. 
maybe forever. If somebody says, what's so special about that rock? Don't even tell them, I don't. Nobody is supposed to know what's special about another person's rock. All right, here are the rules. Rule number one, if you can go to a mountain made out of nothing but a hundred million small, shiny, beautiful, roundish rocks. But if you can't, any place will do. Even an alley, even a sandy road. Rule number two, when you are looking at rocks, don't let mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers or even best friends talk to you. You should choose a rock when everything is quiet. Don't let dogs bark at you or bees buzz at you. But if they do, don't worry. The worst thing you can do is go rock hunting when you're worried. Rule number three, bend over. More, more, even more. You may have to sit on the ground with your head almost touching the earth. You have to look at a rock right in the eye. Otherwise, don't blame me if you can't find a good one. Rule number four, don't get a rock that is too big. You'll always be sorry. It won't fit in your hand right. And it won't fit in your pocket. A rock as big as an apple is too big. A rock as big as a horse is much too big. Rule number five, don't choose a rock that's too small. It will only be easy to lose or a mouse might eat it, thinking that it was a seed. Believe me, that happened to a boy in the state of Arizona. Rule number six, the rock must be perfect. It has to feel easy in your hand when you close your fingers over it. It has to feel jumpy in your pocket when you run. Some people touch a rock a thousand times a day. There aren't many feel, things that feel as good as a rock if the rock is perfect. Rule number seven, look for the perfect color. That could be a sort of pinkish gray with bits of silver, shine on it. Some rocks look brown, but they are really other colors too. But you only see them when you squint really hard and when the sun is right. Another way to see colors of rocks is to dip that rock in a clear mountain stream if one is passing by. Rule number eight, the shape of the rock is up to you. There's a girl in Alaska that only likes flat rocks. Don't ask me why, because I like them lumpy. The thing to remember about shapes is this, any rock looks good with a hundred other rocks around it on a hill. But if your rock is going to be special, it should look good all by itself in the bathtub. Rule number nine, always sniff a rock. Rocks have their own smells. Some kids can tell by sniffing whether a rock came from the middle of the earth or from an ocean or from a mountain where the wind and sun touched it every day for a million years, you'll find out 
that grown-ups can't tell these things. Too bad for them. They just can't smell as well as kids can. Oh, wow. Rule number 10, don't ask anybody to help you choose. I've seen a lizard pick one rock out of a desert full of rocks and go sit there alone. I've seen a snail pass up 20 rocks and spend all day getting to the one it wanted. You have to make up your own mind. You'll know. All right, that's 10 rules. If you think of any more, write them down yourself. I'm going out to play a game that takes, takes me and one rock to play. Oh, I wonder if you know what that game is. Ooh, I think I know. I happen to have a rock right here in my hand. Well, I wonder if she's going to play hopscotch with her rock. Well, my friends, isn't that a fun and special story? I think it was because I think it tells us a little bit more about our gospel reading today. Well, back to the story. The wicked tenants in Jesus' story were being yucky and selfish. God sent many people to help them, and they refused the help time and time again. God was persistent, though, giving the people many chances to see what was very important. People. Yes, people. People are very important in God's eyes. So God sent a very special person. God sent Jesus. There Jesus was right in front of their eyes telling this story. And Jesus says in the scripture verse I shared with you today that the builders rejected the cornerstone, that they did not see seem good in their eyes. My friends, they rejected Jesus, our chief cornerstone. Let me show you another very special picture. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Well, one of the rocks, the lumpy rocks, I've been showing to you today is shaped like a cornerstone. Can you see that? Look at that. It kind of looks like the picture, doesn't it? A cornerstone. It also looks like the state of Virginia. And it's a very special stone. It is my cornerstone that I found on a very special walk. Well, the people in our story today rejected the chief cornerstone. Well, my friends, I know I'm a living stone or a rock for Jesus, and I try to help people, and sometimes I feel rejected, and it feels horrible to be rejected. It makes us sad. So I bet Jesus felt very sad too that the people rejected him. Well, the little girl in the story I read to you today also sees what's important right in front of her eyes. And she notices what is best about all kinds of rocks. She sees their beauty and notices their detail. She sees them how God sees them, beautiful and perfect. God makes the rejected stones, the chief cornerstones, and he sees the importance of all people and things that he created, even bullies. Like God and like the little girl in the story, we should always try to 
do so as well. Well, my friends, let us close in a very special prayer. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, the rock of our lives. Thank you for giving us many chances, even when we keep making mistakes. Help us to see your love and to show your love to one another better, even people who are hard to love. We love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, I'll see you just in a few hours in Sunday school and then later in church. Have a beautiful morning. Bye-bye.